Hare Krishna. So, so this is a very, very nice verse. This verse is uh, spoken by the wives of the Devas. When they witness the uh, passing of Prithu Maharaj. Uh, this chapter is about Prithu Maharaj going back home, back to Godhead. So, this uh, this chapter is ex- the topic of this chapter is actually a very very important topic because all of us will have to go through it. Uh, we all have to go through it. So Maharaj Prithu, being a very very um, pure devotee of the Lord, who came to perform a specific function for the service of the Lord, uh, he came to re-establish uh, what we know today as deity worship. Uh, so in the, there are nine processes of bhakti. One of the processes is deity worship. So the person, the personality that is famous for deity worship is Prithu Maharaj. In this chapter in Srimad Bhagavatam, we heard how Prithu Maharaj performed uh, Ashwamedha Yagyas. That is, is considered deity worship also. Uh, in the category of deity worship. So after establishing uh, deity worship, worship of Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu himself appeared in front of him. Uh, very wonderful chapter whereby you can see the conversation between Lord Vishnu and his pure devotee. The amazing thing here is that when Lord Vishnu appeared, Lord Vishnu was in ecstasy. Not the devotee was in ecstasy. The devotee as he was always in, in, in ecstasy. But here Lord Vishnu was in ecstasy. Why? Because he was so much uh, appreciative, so much uh, in, uh, in uh, what do you call, in love with his devotee. And Lord Vishnu was so much in ecstasy that he wanted to collapse in ecstasy. So this is a very wonderful uh, demonstration of the relationship between the pure devotee and Maharaj Prithu. So this chapter talks about when Maharaj Prithu, he became old. Uh, he became old and he handed over his kingdom to his children. Which is what all good uh, devotees should do. Uh, another very good example is uh, our Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj, the moment he got to know that he was cursed by this young, immature Brahmana boy to die in seven days, immediately he, he said, okay, time to go. You know, please, please understand, uh, this, uh, this is a quite unusual, you know. You know why? Because Kshatriyas, their nature, they are very passionate. No? So, s- somebody do something like cursing to them, uh, they will challenge, you know. That is their nature. They are challenging. Like a king come and challenge another king to fight means they cannot refuse, you know. They must fight, you know. So when Parishit Maharaj, when he heard he got cursed, it is n- normal to hear that Kshatriyas will curse that, that person back. Because that is their nature. Huh? Very passionate. They challenging. They like challenge. But instead what you see is Maharaj Parishit, he... Uh, did not retaliate. Why is that? That's quite unusual, actually. Eh? Very, very, un- uh, very unusual. He did not retaliate simply because uh, Parikshit Maharaj was a pure devotee of Krishna, and he immediately knew when he heard that he was going to die in seven days. He immediately knew that this is Krishna's arrangement. Somehow or other, whether this is a fight or no fight, eventually I must make arrangement for me to leave this world. So he took this opportunity. Same thing with Vidura also. When he got insulted by by Duridana, Vidura is a is a she's got a Kshatriya mode. He's everything about him is Kshatriya, you know. When he got insulted by Duridana, he could he could have challenged him and say, Oh, you insult me, okay, come, let's fight to the death. That's normal for Kshatriya. But instead, what did, did, did uh, Vidura do? Yeah. yeah, he just coyly, you know, went to his room, took off all his his armor, everything, his crown, everything. He, left, he walked out, he left his sword at the door and he just went. Because he knows, says, this is all arrangement of the Supreme Law. So, Prithu Maharaj also, the moment he became old, he knew already, okay, enough already, enough of this working, working life already. Huh? This is quite uh, unusual because today in Kali Yuga you will see people work very very hard to become in power. When they get the power, they don't want to let go. Until the day they die, they don't want to let go. So this is a sign of great ignorance. 
these leaders are a great, greatly ignorant of their own self-interest. So this, these wives of this devas, they are saying here, if you have this human form of life, and you do not know what is the purpose of your human uh, human form of life, you are committing atmaha. Atmaha means suicide of the soul. Suicide of the soul. Su- suicide of the soul here is in the worst possible sense, you know. If a human being commits suicide, you know, he can kill himself once a day. The death can happen once a day. Huh? If the person commits suicide, he can die once a day. But here, this word Atmaha means that you die again and again and again and again. Why? Because you are trapped in the cycle of karmic reaction, cycle of birth and death. You take multiple, unlimited number of births in 8,400,000 species of life. But that is worse than just committing suicide once, isn't it? It's much, much worse. So these, these wives of these devas, they are seeing the pastime of uh, Maharaj Prithu going back home, back to Godhead with his wife Archi. So they, they spoke this verse. So this is actually a very, very important verse. Huh? So in the purport, it is, it is very interestingly, it is explained. It's also a very, very important point. Huh? In uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, and there are many other more yogas. Huh? Many, but these are the main three that uh, we are all very familiar with. So, uh, after explaining all of this, Krishna in chapter 18, he says, Sarva Dharma Paritaja Mamikam Saranam Raja Aham Tvam Sarva Papipyo Mokshai Shami Mahatma Suchana. He says, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I will absorb you all sinful reactions, do not fear. Huh? When he says, Abandon all varieties of religion, he also means this Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, and Astanga Yoga. Why did Krishna say that? Why, why did he say that? Why did he go to the trouble of explaining about Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Astanga Yoga? And then he told Arjuna in the, in the, in the end, he said, You abandon all of that. This is not important. Why did Krishna do that? The, the reason why Krishna did that was because he knows that in this material world, the, all the living entities, they are here only for one purpose. Uh, that is to become lord of material nature. They want to enjoy. They want to become enjoyers. Huh? The main motivation for being in this material world is to experience sense gratification. So, Krishna told Arjuna, my dear Arjuna, you abandon all this yoga, this karma yoga, jnana yoga, asana yoga. Why? Because these yogas are contaminated with this idea of enjoyment. Uh, the karmi, the, the karma yogis, uh, they are attached to performing fruitive activities. That's why they are called karma yogis. They are better than the karma kandis. Karma kandis, they don't have any idea other than life is meant for enjoyment. Uh, karma yogis are much better than them. Why? Because these people are still attached to performing work, earning salary, doing business, having family, having lots of children, going on vacation, uh, it's, uh, working very hard for name and fame and all that, but they have some respect for Krishna and his devotees. So they do some kind of charity. They do some kind of charity, they give donation. So that is their, that is their glory. Uh, but the problem here is, they are still attached to some sense gratification. Okay. Then the Jnanis also say, Jnanis, they are uh, studying scripture and they understand that this material world is a place of misery. It's miserable. Dukkalayam uh, Sasutam. This, this material world is a place of misery and whatever good that you experience is temporary. Uh, whatever good you experience is temporary. So this jnani is what they want is they want to escape from the suffering of this material world but they are still attached to sense enjoyment. <laughs> they still want to enjoy. They want to escape from this misery of this material world, but they still want to enjoy. So these jnanis, their ambition is to be promoted to the heavenly planets. The highest planet in the heavens is the Brahma Loka. Brahma Loka is where you find sages there. Uh, they just, very wonderful place, very peaceful, very quiet, they just do meditation. They do, uh, they do uh, meditation. 
and uh, they are very happy very peaceful eh? huh? so that is their ambition but the the main motivation is they want to still enjoy now they are enjoying in Brahma Loka just like Lord Brahma is enjoying they are also enjoying that so the thing is here enjoyment there the sense gratification is still there that's the problem there huh? And then a bit higher than that, uh, higher than the Jnani, uh, the, uh, what, uh, Jnani yogis is the Ashtanga yogis. Ashtanga yogis, they want to acquire some kind of power, some kind of magic, some kind of Siddhi. Siddhi means perfection. Uh, they want to acquire some kind of power so that they can um, enjoy some name and fame. Uh, they want to enjoy name and fame. And they perform severe austerities. They perform severe uh, 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 austerities. But in this day and age of Kali Yuga, a lot of what these yogis can do, whatever perfection they can do, now scientists also can do. You see? I tell you one story. Huh? There's a, there was once uh, Radhanath Swami. Before he became Radhanath Swami, he was traveling in India and he had uh, ambition to become a yogi. So he was once in Ganga, in the banks of Ganga, he was staying with some yogis there and one day when he went to the Ganga to take bath, he saw one yogi walking on water. He was walking across the one bank of the Ganga to the other bank and Radhana Swami who saw this, he was amazed, he said, wow, look at that, mystic yoga in action. So he was so excited, you know, because he is a westerner. This is like not every day you see this. Eh? He is a westerner. So he went to a nearby jetty where they had some boats there and some boat men there. So he went to them and he says, Hey, you see that? This yogi is walking on water. So these boatmen all turned to look at the yogi and they started laughing at this yogi. And they told Radhanath Swami, he says, This one is only two rupees. Huh? Radhana Swami was confused. He said, no, no, Hey, the, the, the yogi is walking on water, huh? He said, yes, yes, yes. That yogi walking is only worth two rupees. He said, I don't understand why you say it's worth two rupees. I said, you pay me two rupees, then I'll show you. So, Radhana Swami had a few rupees with him. He gave him two rupees. He said, come, you sit on my boat. I'll take you across the <laughs> Ganga. Just like this yogi. I, I, I will entertain you on, 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 on top of that. Then he understood, oh, what is the real value of walking on this water? What is the real value? Now I pay two rupees to this boatman. This boatman will take me across. Not me, he will take me across comfortably. He will entertain me. He will tell me a story. This yogi is walking all alone. What he, what, he, what he has. So this is one very good example. You see? So, uh, so whatever yogic cities, scientists now can do already. Uh, for instance, uh, in uh, one of the yogic cities, is uh, you can travel on the ray of the sun. When the sun ray, when the sun is called light, uh, you can walk on the sun ray. You can travel anywhere in, uh, on the, in the world on the... Today we got aeroplane. Huh? You pay some money, you sit on the aeroplane. Not only you sit comfortably, you got aircon some more. Not hot, not hot sun. Aircon, got TV, got music, got food some more. Huh? Got people next to you can tell story. So much more better. Huh? There's another city where you can become smaller than the smallest. Now, scientists all, they got, you know, machine, you know, electron uh, uh, microscope, to get, they can shoot atoms through buildings and all that. Scientists can do all of this already. So, the value of such cities is, is very little. Like that boatman, he says, worth two rupees. How uh, You're walking on water. Other people are who are, who are, is worth any, he said, two rupees. But, what is the difference between the, all of these karma yogis, jnana yogis and astanga yogis compared to a bhakta? Uh, the bhakta, his, his um, specialty is that he is not interested in anything to do with this material world. He is convinced this material world cannot really satisfy me. I cannot find the happiness that I seek. In this material world, it cannot be found. Impossible, cannot be found. If you find it also, 
it will be temporary. Why? Because your temporary material body will die. You are forced to die. So bhaktas, they don't have any faith in all this, this happiness, name, fame, more money, castle, you know, I want this, I don't want to enjoy it. They have no faith whatsoever. Instead, these, these uh, bhaktas, these devotees, bhakti yogis, what they do is, they only focus on Krishna's pleasure. Ah, that is the specialty there. That is the most important point there. Ah, this is one very, very important point. So, so this is... Uh, let me see, yeah? did I miss any other point in this verse here? Yeah? So in this verse, uh, in this uh, chapter, it is explained that at the end of life, Maharaj Prithu, he performed uh, uh, Astanga Yoga in the ashramas. Yeah? He left his kingdom, he went to the ashrama, he went to the jungle to exclusively meditate upon the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Exclusively he want to meditate. If he is still in his palace, he is still doing his job, you cannot exclusively do anything. Uh, that's why he went there. And what happened was, when he went to the ashrama to meditate upon Lord Krishna, his wife followed him. His wife is not different from, from Lakshmi Devi, Archi. So, it is explained here very interestingly, Srila Prabhupada explained in the purport that uh, Maharaj Prithu, he performed Ashtanga Yoga in an uh, expert way to a reverse, he wants to reverse all his attachments because throughout his life, he has developed some attachment. Uh, we cannot run away from being attached. Huh? We are attached to our body, uh, we are attached to our shirt, we got a favorite shirt, I got favorite jappa. I got favorite uh, dhoti, uh, I got favorite chanting bag, uh, everything, all this attachment. I got uh, favorite child, uh, you got favorite son, I got favorite daughter, uh, I like certain food. So all of these attachments, you know. So Maharaj Spiritu, what he do, did was he performed Ashtanga Yoga and he reversed back all this attachment, he give it back to where it came from. It's a process, this one. Uh. And he performed pranayama, breathing exercise. Uh, this breathing exercise brings balance into your consciousness. So, Srila Prabhupada says here, very interestingly, in this day and age of Kali Yuga, this kind of Ashtanga Yuga cannot be performed. Why? Because the environment does not allow it to happen. Uh, the, our environment, the place where we are in now, this material world, is full of contamination. The air is contaminated. The atmosphere is contaminated, everything is contaminated. Very, very difficult to achieve such perfection in Ashtanga Yoga. But, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, singing and dancing for the pleasure of Gaur Nithai, that is already automatically Pranayama already. And that is the perfection of Bhakti. <coughs> that is the perfection of Bhakti. <laughs> So this is this is some very very important points. And the, the the in this verse here you can see the wives of the devas they are amazed at seeing Archi. Why? Because when finally when uh, Prithu Maharaj by way of Ashtanga Yoga meditated upon the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and his Atma left his body and his Atma went back home back to Godhead, Archi being the wife of Prithu, you know what she did? Uh? She took the husband's body, she built a, uh, what you call a, a fire, so on. she put her husband's body inside, <coughs> and she herself entered the fire. She performed Sati, <coughs> but uh, this, uh, these wives of these devas, they were watching this, they were watching this happen, and with their own two eyes, they saw that Archi also got liberation just like the husband. This is a very, very important point to, to understand here. Today all we don't perform Sati or eh? This is not recommended. Eh? But, but the lesson here is that to be faithful to one's husband, who is a pure devotee of the Lord, is the greatest of greatest of fortune for the woman, for the wife, for the mother. That, that has got to be understood. Women must tell women this. Men talk about this means a bit weird. Lah. I'm, t- I'm telling this because women must tell women. Uh, you must tell young girls. 
you want to be happy in life means you automatically your nature is you want to be under care of some man that is woman's nature but if you can find a husband who is a devotee of the lord very easily very very easily the girl can get liberation simply by being obedient to a pure devotee of the lord by performing loving devotion service for the pleasure of a devotee guru and krishna devotee here means husband na is it so when the the wives of the devas saw these they were amazed totally amazed and they they were lamenting these devas wives of the devas were lamenting why because they are in swarga <laughs> too much distraction too much comfortable situation too much you know everything is nice you know they have got no motivation to uh, to perform loving devotional service in a very pure way they have no motivation what motivation they have uh, just like just like all of us here we all got jobs we got house we got family everything romba nalla the a uh, very nice very comfortable what is the motivation for you to come to temple and do talavali work ha uh, to do the deity worship to sweep the floor clean the floor to cook then after that must wash the pots you know you know what is the motivation there is no motivation why because we are too attached so much attachment to all this our my body my my house my car or oh, my tv or oh, my friends or oh, my work so all this is distraction so the question now is how are we as devotees if we are aspiring to become devotees even though you might be initiated but actually you are aspiring because nobody is performing pure pure devotional service nobody is performing pure devotional service everybody is struggling with their own no time prabhu no time ah no time no time so the question now here is what should we do what is the very first thing that we can do to try to get out of this illusion this is my actually huh? we think we are happy uh, waiting only for some heart attack high blood pressure or something a you a poor and that time we need to do la uh, pure devotion service you know uh, so before that happens if you are here you have any intelligence you would want to think you know hey i i know i'm in maya i know that is true but what should i do what should i do so the srimad bhagavatam repeatedly in every canto everywhere uh, example of the example example of the text example is you must hear the glories of krishna from the lips of pure devotees you must hear it uh, from pure devotees so now the question is i and you all know i am not pure okay i am not pure so where to find this pure devotee so srimad bhagavatam explains ha uh, there's two bhagavatam there's one book bhagavat and there's person bhagavat okay the person bhagavat the person the person who is a pure devotee of the lord he only speaks what is in srimad bhagavatam he doesn't go out of what srimad bhagavatam speaks okay that is a person bhagavat Uh, if you don't believe me you can hear what uh, all the lectures by sila propa uh, you can hear his, his lectures and he will speak only from srimad bhagavatam he will speak from srimad bhagavatam he will speak from bhagavad gita he will speak from chaitanya chaktamrita but unfortunately for us we don't have association of such pure pure devotees ha huh? like sila propa ha uh, like that like chenananda go swami maharaj ha uh, like japataka swami we don't have association so what should we do we should take shelter of srimad bhagavatam the book bhagavat book of pustaka ah you must take ah uh, shastra you must take shelter of shastra but to be fair i read srimad bhagavatam a few times and it's not easy to understand not easy to to understand so together with reading srimad bhagavatam you must do two or two other things you must do two other things huh? you take shelter of srimad bhagavatam by reading it uh, you read for the purpose of understanding you want to understand what is being said i really want to understand okay you read like that not not just both vidyo maharaj i plan read it yeah read it what is it don't know not like that huh? you want to read to understand okay after reading you must do two other things number one is 
chant your round attentively your hari krishna maha mantra you must chant attentively this one is like your right left hand and right hand two hands only you can get result then to put tanga no you can get result the other thing you should do is you should listen to sila prabhu's lectures why you know because sila prabhu in his lectures even though he wrote the purport the purport you are reading in sriman bhagavatam is by him only but when sila prabhu gives class he gives more than what he writes in the purport no i don't know you will realize this or not hearing someone speak and reading what they write is two different experience you know when you read you get you get a lot more knowledge and a little bit of emotion a little bit of feeling but when you hear the prophet speak uh, you get his heart his his uh, life and soul you know. he's talking to you, you know and he's talking about krishna only you can hear his love his compassion his mercy you can hear his determination you can hear it and that my friend that my friend is the one that will save you from this repeated birth and death in this material world why because in this world anybody who does anything they do because of some feeling some determination nobody cares if you know a lot but people will care for you when they know how much they they know how much you care for them emotion feeling ah huh? uh every week when we have some service to come and do here you think allah ma i go again to center allah ma i go to work the lord la la le chela <coughs> but when you hear sila prabhupada says you know yes sometimes it might be difficult for you as a new find you would but go anyway go anyway why because krishna is there go and do devotional service for the pleasure of krishna don't be worried about if there's people there and you know, people appreciate you or not people come for class or not people because i've given class when there's nobody here i am the pujari i sit down i give class nobody here i will just turn and give class to to sila prabhupada so what sila prabhupada himself say he said never mind you come and do your service whatever it is do don't worry people come people don't come people appreciate people don't don't say they are not important you just do your service ah uh, with the knowledge that parmatma is within your heart and he is watching what you are doing and he is appreciating it so this is the mode in which we should approach our devotional so this is the main lesson here in this chapter so this chapter is the uh, end of the series of chapters on maharaj prithu this we in going back home back to what next chapter is about lord shiva very very interesting also ha huh? for grihastha especially ha huh? for married people ha huh? there will be chanda between lord shiva and durga <laughs> are you interested any any clerical any questions any comments